So that's the sort of the admin basics, if you like. Um, we'll do a little bit on integration, and then we'll get into reporting, which is where, where most people see the, the interest, I think. Um, we did some bits on integration earlier on, which most of you sat in on various things. Um, just to go through the outline, we have data sources. So this is data integration. So this is beyond spreadsheets. This is where we're, we're going back and integrating either with your core system or we're doing some kind of transformation to your spreadsheet because it's not in the right format. So we bring it into a data source and then we, then we load it. Now the loaders is where it loads it to different sheets. So if you've got a, even a remotely complicated model with lots of different sheets, you're going to need lots of different loaders. And the conversations I have with people earlier on, we say, well, I've got too many loaders, and how can I manage them all? The answer is tasks. You set up a task, and on a task, you can put as many loaders as you like. So if you take your source data, break it up through loaders, the fact that this goes to this sheet, and this one's into company, so it needs trading partner, and this one goes here because it's got customer on it. But then, in order to run them, you put them on a task, and you just push the button. Now, I thought, when I put this slide together, that most people knew that, it turns out you didn't, so we covered that. But the bit that we always miss is the fact that when you create the task, you then have to give users permission to run it. When I demo it, I'm always an administrator, so I just create the task and show you how to do it. The number of calls you get, well, I've set it up, it doesn't work, and now Alice can't run it. Ah, right, so what do you need to do? You create a task, and then on, that's what it says there, grant permission. And you can grant edit permission or run permission. And then you can do it by role, by user, or by group. So another use of groups, potentially. So you could set up a group. And bear in mind, people could be in more than one group. So you could be in the exec group, and you could be in the ability to import data group. Um, and then you give permission to so this one here, just, just Chris and Guy have access to run that. Then, when they go to the nice blue button screen, you'll have access to it. If you don't enable that, then you won't. This one's actually come up a few times this morning. When we talk about data or loaders, we're usually talking about planning data or actual data. Bear in mind, the things highlighted here, we can use master data loaders as well. So we can use loaders on tasks that are scheduled to keep your master data in sync between adaptive and your core system. So normally when we're writing things, we would go here to a planning data loader, and then it would go off to your core system and pull in the numbers, and it will do something with those numbers. What you actually aren't aware of is these things here. So we can write a script that goes to your ERP, GL system, whatever it is, picks up the latest list of cost centers, and loads into Adaptive. And that could be scripts, and you can run that every, every, every morning. So at 7 o'clock every morning, it runs the latest GL account and the latest level structure. Be aware that you might not want to do that. Is it right to have every cost center, every GL account, every dimension member in Adaptive? It might be for some people. But for others, it certainly isn't. And, and the one I would always use is, is um, bank accounts on your balance sheet. You know, adaptive is a strategic tool. It's not a short-term cash flow. We are not trying, with our modeling, to work out how much cash is going to be in each bank account each month. Therefore, it's arguable whether there's any benefit in having all the bank accounts listed in adaptive. You have one called cash. But if you run this GL loader, it's going to come start creating all these bank accounts for you. So be careful. Because it's a script, we can restrict it. So it can run every morning and go and get the latest GL accounts, but only where prefix doesn't equal bank or whatever it is. So we will turn it on some of the integrations and how you can use those business rules. You do the same thing, you write a business rule that says replicate all GL accounts, but not if it equals cash or bank or something. So assuming you are doing that and you want everything synchronized, then the next screen was the one new thing that was in the release. The latest release that came out, Steve said they've been a bit quiet. The last release that came out this month, actually, it was July, wasn't it? Had auto mapping. Which wasn't there before. It's been there for about a month, actually, before they announced it. Um, you can set up your loader. So this, is, this is a loader, in this case, for unit price. To automatically map. In order to, in order to automatically map, obviously the accounts need to exist in Adaptive, which is why you have your, your level mapping and your geo mapping. Um, so you can set that up so that rather than normally what happens is you run a routine and it fails and it says these three accounts, you can't load them and they need mapping. To me, I'm quite a controlling person, I'd rather that and I'd rather know where it's failed and I'd rather look at it and tick it and say yes, that's fine. If you're more relaxed about these things, then this is the way to go. And if you've got a process in place in your organisation of which Adaptive is part, 
then that works. And what I mean by that is you set up a new GL account, the process for the person who sets up the new GL account includes it active. Set it up in the GL, make sure you've got the right access to it, make sure you've got the right privileges, whatever else you need to do with your GL, set it up in adaptive. You could provide the mapping, or you can just say, well, at least it exists in adaptive, and then adaptive will, will also map. The caveat is, adaptive will have its best guess. If you've called something bank and something else cash, then that's just what no one could know. So think about how you use it, but particularly where you've got customers. If you've got new customers being created all the time, then you, you can set them up as auto map, and you can set them up in the dimension as being create on import. Now that's something you might not be aware of. Within a dimension called customer, you can tick a box that says import automatically creates a new customer. Always comes with a caveat, be careful you can control your source system. Because if you've got a customer coming from your core GL system, that's fine, it's going to be unique. If it's coming from a spreadsheet, chances are it could be Google in one sheet and Google in another one, and then you've ended up with two customers and it doesn't work. So if you can control your source data, then we can synchronize everything.